Hey everyone, sorry I haven't been posting any videos lately, I haven't had any internet for a couple of days, but it's fixed now, so I can get back to making some more videos. So what I want to talk about today is randomizers, and mainly because the dispenser randomizer um, no longer works in versions 1.8.6 and above. Um, so before this update, if you placed a a command block in a dispenser and powered it, the command block would be placed, um, but now it's just shot out like any other item. And that was due to a security bug, which I'm not allowed to talk about, but um, it's a real shame that this had to be done this way, because essentially a lot of maps are now broken for 1.8.6. So I suggest playing all adventure maps I'm pretty sure Diversity 2 and a lot of other popular maps will not work with 1.8.6. Use either 1.8.3 or 1.8.5. Uh, don't use 1.8.4 because that has a scoreboard bug which may affect some maps as well. Um, but anyway, I'm going to talk about four different types of randomizers that I've got here. Two of them are fairly well known, and then these other two are pretty new, I haven't seen them around, especially this one, I kind of came up with it myself, sort of related to someone else's design, but anyway, I'll um, go into each one in a bit more detail. So this is the first type of randomizer I'm going to talk about, and this is the spread player randomizer. Essentially what this does is just use the spread players command to spread this armor stand um, across any of these nine different command blocks here, and um, quickly power them and turn it off. So I've got a bunch of command blocks here, each with a say command in, say 1, say 2, all the way up to say 9. And so what I'm going to do is just press this button once and it's going to power to generate a random number. So you can see 1, 1 again, 2, come on, 5. I promise it is random. Um, but basically what's happening is we are spreading this armor stand here from the center coordinate here um, with a max spread distance of 1.5 blocks. The reason you have to use 1.5 blocks is that there's actually 0.5 of a block between the center point here and the edge of this block and then the full block here. So we're spreading it with a distance of 1.5 blo uh, yeah, blocks just to get an even probability across all the uh, command blocks. And so you can even expand this design, but you have to use um, sort of all the blocks around it. I mean, you could have like null uh, command blocks, which don't give any output, but essentially you have to spread the um, armor stand about the center position a certain number of blocks. Um, you can't really do much with probability here. Um, you can sort of, if you change the spread distance to like one block, for example, um, but it's 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 more for just generating sort of random numbers at equal probabilities. So if I give this uh, set block clock a little power, you'll see that it runs fairly quickly, and we get a bunch of random numbers just thrown up in chat. Um, so if I stop this quickly, I'll explain how this works. So these two blocks on the sides are just for the set block clock, and then these three command blocks here are for the actual uh, sort of command side of things. So this block just does the spread players command. So we spread, we do spread players about these coordinates here, which are just the center um, of those command blocks, um, with a minimum distance of zero and a maximum spread of 1.5. Um, false, um, that just means whether to respect teams or not, um, that doesn't really matter, and we're targeting the entity named spread, so we've got one entity here named spread, and then the next command executes from that entity set block, uh, redstone block, um, so you can't actually see it, but when that fill clock is, set block clock is actually powered, these will be setting redstone blocks wherever they are wherever they are basically. And then this block here then does a fill command to replace um, basically all the blocks here, like all these um, blocks on top of the command blocks with air to replace the redstone blocks. So you don't see any of the redstone blocks here, but they are being uh, powered. Um, 
So it's a fairly good system. I have seen people use um, pressure plates in the past and allow the uh, armor stand to drop onto that, but that's not really necessary if you just use the uh, redstone block. Uh, so anyway, that's the first one I'm going to talk about. Uh, next on, we'll go on to the, this one over here. So this next randomizer is, I guess, a selector randomizer where you target a random arm stand um, and then set the block on top of it, or set the block where it is to a redstone block. Um, so it's sort of similar to how that works, but it gives you a bit more control. I sort of prefer this method just because to me it makes more sense and I can play with probability a lot easier and um, for small things it works great if you don't need like large numbers generated then it works great if you need large numbers generated then it's gonna cause a bit of lag eventually because you are targeting so many different entities but basically same setup again say 1 to say 9 uh, this one only needs um, two different command blocks Basically, one to set the block and one to uh, fill it with air again to replace all the redstone blocks. So, um, if I go ahead and power this, we see the numbers popping up in chat. No moving entities or anything. The redstone blocks are being placed. If I place one, you can see it's immediately cleared. And we get a bunch of random numbers popping up in chat again. Uh, so, if I go ahead and stop this. So what happens is we are executing from a random entity. You can use at r to target random entities in 1.8 as long as you specify the type. So we're targeting a random entity of type armor stand named r. And from that armor stand, from that random armor stand, we are doing set block, redstone block. You can also, which is quite interesting, is you can target more than one entity. So you can target like two entities at the same time. Um, Basically, that'll just give more outputs faster. And then we just do the fill command. So if I power that now, it'll give the it'll give more outputs, faster outputs, because it's doing two at a time instead of just one. But yeah, that's that one fairly simple. Oh yeah, um, I should also mention that a cool thing you can do with this is actually change the probability and do all sorts of null things like that. So if I actually summon an arm stand over here, oops, not arrow, arm stand at these coordinates, custom name R, um, that'll do. I know it's not a marker, but it is named R. And if I go ahead and power this, you'll see that a redstone block will eventually be there because that's not in the fill coordinates. So you can see it's there. And so this means you can essentially have like null values to your thing. Or if you want, you can change like the probability that um, uh, one will be the most common. So we can actually make one the most common value by changing these coordinates. Uh, and then if we place a bunch of them down, it's going to place tons. You'll see that the chat will mainly be contained. Oops mainly be contained of ones now. So we've actually just changed the probability. And this is useful for things like, I use this a lot in my planetary confinement map, although it was a rather crude version of this, um, not, nowhere near as efficient, use pressure plates and all that garbage. Um, but essentially, you have, you can play a lot with probability with this, and it's great for creating a sort of map aspects, like random items, how rare do you want an item to appear, and stuff like that. Um, so that's that's the random selector um, randomizer. I don't really want to call it. I don't know really what else to call it. Um, but then next we'll move on to this one over here. Okay, so this is the third design of randomizer, and I'm not going to explain it fully because I s still don't fully understand it. To be honest, um, it is designed by Rubisk. I've sort of tried to imitate it but I've probably done something wrong so I don't want to give you guys the wrong sort of commands but I'll leave a link to Rubisk's video on um, how he made the rogue map um, it shows his random number generator in action and um, basically this uses a more mathematical side of things and it uses the modulus to generate a random number if I hit tab you can see I have a random number between 0 and 9 
And essentially how this works, I'm not, again, I'm not going to explain it fully, but essentially how this works is we have a, oops, set display sidebar random. There we go. And if I pause the clock for a second, we have a constant value of R, which is basically just a very large number. We have ran one, which is a random number. Um, I'm just using one random number, but you can have multiple random numbers, which is probably one of the benefits of this system, I guess. And um, we have R out, which is another constant, which determines the sort of n plus one value of the maximum. So I'm generating a number between 0 and 9, not including 10. So if I power this, you can see that uh, RAN1 is basically a random number, but a huge random number. And that's because we are multiplying through using scoreboard players operation. We're multiplying a the constant value R by the existing value of RAN1. So it's constantly being multiplied again and again, over and over by that um, large number. And Essentially, it just generates a random number because it reaches the integral limit and then starts over a negative and so on. And through various modulus things, again, I'm not sure I've done this correct, but um, yeah, by using the modulus um, scoreboard operation, you can get a value. Uh, as often as you like, 20 times a second, um, between 0 and 9 in my case. But if I change that, um, so if I do scoreboard players set uh, r out random 20, I think, you can see that now my random numbers were between 0 and 19. If I set that to 21, you should, yeah, you can see we're getting a few 20s on there. So, it does work, I think. I haven't actually tested it properly, but supposedly this is a very um, efficient way of doing things, but it is probably a lot more complicated, and I, to be honest, I still don't fully understand it. I'm, I prefer much sticking to these simplified methods for my brain to understand, but if you're good at maths and all that, then this should be pretty easy. But again, I'll leave a link to Rubisk's video so you can watch that and Hopefully he, he explains it well enough that you can copy it. So this is the last design for a randomizer that I'm going to show today. And I saw a video from Gamer Guppy on his method. Um, it basically abuses the fact that I dropped items are given a random rotation. And he basically used squids and killed the squids very quickly to produce a load of ink sacks and find the rotation from them, giving a total of... 360 possible outputs. Um, obviously, I'm just doing numbers 1 to 4, splitting up the 360 degrees into 90 degree intervals. And um, first, I should probably explain how the um, rotation, sort of horizontal rotation, works in Minecraft. Um, so essentially, when you're when you're facing north, you can see the facing in the debug screen. It starts at minus 180 degrees, and then as you go around, it goes up to minus 90 when you're facing east, and then south is zero, west is 90, and then 180 essentially again is north, back to north. It kind of stops at 179.9, uh, but it doesn't really matter. So that's how that works. And if I go ahead and power this, you can see we have a bunch of falling sand entities um, with a time value of 1, so they're continually being placed and items are spewing out of it. And we get a load of random numbers from these command blocks over here. So, for example, it does execute um, at e type equals item, radius equals 30, minimum horizontal rotation is minus 180. So we're selecting all the entities in a radius of 30 with a rotation between north and east. At least I think it's north and east. Yeah. So any any that's facing anywhere in here. And so that's going to say 1. And then in between here it'll say 2, say 3, and say 4 again. And so obviously you just divide the 360 by how many outputs you want. So 
90 degree intervals in my case, but you'd have up to 360 um, outputs at 20 times a second. Um, so that's pretty cool. And it's pretty compact design. Um, I'll show you the falling sand command. So it's basically just summoning a falling sand entity with time value of one. And I've added this tile ID part in case you want, in case you have other item entities nearby. So you can see how that was deleted as well because I'm actually killing all items in that radius. So if you don't want to do that, you can essentially limit the item that's killed to a specific ID. So if I wanted to limit it to, for example, um, ender frames, I could do that so that I could still drop other items. Um, but anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you have any other designs for randomizers. Um, but these are probably the four sort of most common ones. These two especially in the middle are probably the most common now that dispensers no longer work, sadly. But yeah, remember to play adventure maps in 1.8.3 or 1.8.5. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now. <laughs> there we go.